to mine and if you take nothing else away from today that phrase is important I believe uh, that if you can read something uh, you have legal access to it then you machine should have uh, legal access to mine it as well and the problem is that that is not the case and that is one of the major battles that we're fighting and the current reforms go a little bit towards it but they do not uh, cover it completely and this is the organisation I've set up, contentmine.org. It's open, non, uh, non-profit, under the Shuttleworth. Okay, so I have been very inspired by the fight that Nelly Crows and more recently uh, Yulia Reda have uh, carried out in Europe. And they have driven this agenda for reform uh, and the global availability of knowledge of all sorts, but particularly science in, the, um, uh, in Europe. And I'd also like, oh sorry, I always do that. Um, uh, I'd also like to highlight uh, the young people that I've had the privilege to work with, young people of the future, and they have pioneered much of what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to give you three or four cases of content mining, um, and um, uh, ones that I think you will all um, understand. Um, So we'll go on to these now. The first is obesity, and here is my uh, symbol for obesity, um, (laughs) with a rather extended um, tummy, uh, University of Cambridge. So the University of Cambridge has an epidemiology department uh, which has to read the literature, and they have to read 10,000 papers and decide which of them are valuable. And uh, they have 20 seconds to read this amount of stuff and decide whether it is about obesity or not. And you'll see that they have highlighted it. It's got words like body mass um, and mortality risk and um, uh, so on. But they have to do it without this help. And actually, a scientific paper is a very badly presented document. Uh, Scientific publishing actually degrades information rather than adds to it. This paper might be 10 pages. Uh, And uh, Polly, that's not her real name, um, uh, gave me this today. They had to do 10,000 abstracts um, and they had six people working intensely. Um, Imagine reading 1,600 papers in two and a half days. Uh, This stuff, it's turgid. And you would really like a machine to be able to do it. And our software in Content Mine, which is completely open, um, uh, it's Apache 2 license or um, uh, you know, or BSD or equivalent, it's all open. You can do this in a few minutes. So rather than them spending weeks doing this, uh, it can be done in minutes. But we are not allowed to do this except under the exception which we've only just started using. And most people here would not be allowed to do it. So people are wasting their time because they cannot do it. So here's another one. EU uh, clinical trials. Now there are 400,000 clinical trials um, published uh, in government repositories of which the uh, EU clinical trials is one. And Ben Goldacre in the UK has been pushing for trials to be open. Many clinical trials are not open and they're not even um, published. So this is what we're pushing for because if you only have the positive trials about a drug and not the negative ones, then health suffers. So here's an example. Uh, You look at this, it's got a unique number uh, and it was published in the EU uh, registry in 2009. Now what's happened in those six years since? There's nothing in the registry that tells you um, what the follow-up has been. So we can read the literature and you can see here we've read a paper. You don't have to look at the words on these slides, just listen to what I say. Um, uh, So they're looking for this number. All we're doing is searching the literature for that index of the clinical trial and find out which papers uh, refer to it. Um, So 
we'll give one or two more uh, later. But what does mining involve? It involves discovery. So the first thing you have to do is discover the material that you're going to mine. Now, we've got um, organizations like Google that do this and, and so on, but Google has a uh, ambivalence here. Do you trust Google to give you an objective view? I'm told that the view you get if you're in the States is a US view and the one over in Europe is different. And so Google is not objective. It gives you what it wants to give you, not what you think you need. And so we have to have an open discovery mechanism. The next uh, thing is to scrape the papers. And we do this off the publisher's websites. Now, they say we're not allowed to do it um, because it's violating something. But we are doing it. It's the primary publication. We then index it. Um, and you'll see that in a minute. We search and analyze papers. And we carry out complex transformations on this. And this is what in the US is known as transformative. And that is allowed under their copyright regime. That you can take a document, transform it, and add value. And that is then um, not protected by, uh, the transformation is not protected by copyright. And I would claim that what we're doing here uh, falls into the same category. So what is content? Well, the words are text and data, but in a scientific paper, this is a bit of text here. But most of the rest of the paper is diagrams, or mathematical equations, or maps, or tables. And that is often the most valuable bit in the paper. And that's why I use the word content rather than text and data mining. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, publishers will claim that because this is a creative graphic work, it belongs to them. And I claim that this is the factual representation of something where this is the only way or the most common and valid way of representing it. So that just because it's a diagram doesn't mean it's a creative copyrighted work. This is a simple fact here and we claim uh, that that belongs to the public domain. We built a complete infrastructure. I put a, several years of my life into building this, and my young colleagues have built uh, the same amount again. I'm not going to uh, go through this in detail, um, uh, but just trust me, this is a complete infrastructure. We've deployed it. It will do everything you need in mining, and it will allow you to add bits on, particularly at the end. So if you want to mine, um, uh, for species, you add a special tool at the bottom where it says Amy here, uh, and that will mine for species. If you wanted to mine uh, the um, proceedings of the European Parliament, the tool would also work for that. It's not, real, it's not um, stuck on science. Uh, it will do uh, really any um, subject um, that you want. I'm going to give you a demo now. This uh, is the only interactive demo, but Look at that, that's chemistry. Most of you won't understand it, but it's a recipe. It's like baking a cake. We added this to this, we heated it, we stirred it, uh, we boiled it, and so on, just as you do in the kitchen. Now, that's quite um, difficult to understand, but I'm now going to go to Cambridge. Uh, so this is a real live demo. We're going to put the same thing into Cambridge, and you can do this at home. Uh, and we've sent it off to Cambridge, and that is how quick mining is when you're allowed to do it. It's almost instantaneous. And not only has it worked out all the phrases, so I'm going to show here's the wash phrase, and here's the dry phrase, and here's the dissolve phase, and so on. But also, it's worked out what the chemical compounds are. And it did all of that while you were watching. So that's what the power of machines is, if you are allowed to do it. Um, back to the slides. Um, We've done this for patents. Um, uh, we've done this for uh, half a million patents. And we get a very high degree of accuracy. But we can't do it on the chemical literature because the chemical publishers claim that it's their copyright. And Elsevier, if you mine their stuff, specifically says that you must not compete with our products in the marketplace. And one of their products is called Reaxis, which is a chemical database. And so if I sign their um, uh, permission, which I am not going to, uh, then um, I would be debarred from publishing any chemistry because it might uh, impact on their product in the marketplace. And this, in my view, is totally unreasonable and why I've challenged uh, their 
uh, copyright uh, their text and data mining licenses. We're doing endangered species. I'm not going to spend much time on this, but you can see here the need to put a fact in context. So this is a fact, it's a um, ribbon seal, uh, and you'll see that the text line is critical to understand it. And we mine facts every day, and this is today's fact, which is E. coli. Um, and very quickly, I'm going to show you what we can do by <coughs> aggregating information. So. You may be familiar with the tree of life. Uh, the, uh, here's us animals, okay, and here is um, an endangered species. That's a Danish polar bear in Greenland. Uh, and here is a, um, an experimental animal um, from uh, one of the labs that we're working with. I won't give names. We want to uh, build a tree of bacteria. So uh, we've taken 5,000 papers. Uh, we've read those from the literature, we've extracted the image out of each of them, we've done some, uh, I'm quite proud of this, some very uh, advanced mining of this because this is all pixels, as you can see. You don't have to understand the details, but the point is we can transform it automatically into something here. It goes through lots of stages and ultimately we end up with a tree of all bacteria uh, that have been published in the literature. Um, and uh, here's a rather pretty picture of it. So it's pulled all those papers together, but technically during that I have almost certainly violated copyright. I cannot do this work without <laughs> violating copyright, that's the point. And there we are. We can't do reproducible mining without it. And the Hargreaves legislation, which is very important because it gives us the moral authority to go ahead. It still gives us very little power to publish. We can't tell you what we did because if we published it, we would publish stuff where copyright was claimed. And that's the real problem for a scientist. So they actually have to say, well, we can't tell you how we did it because otherwise we would be breaking uh, copyright. And that's a terrible thing for a scientist to have to do, not publish uh, what they feel they want to publish. I'm sorry that the publishing industry has been so unhelpful over this. After the legislation in the UK came out, they spent their effort uh, trying to produce licenses for Europe, uh, trying to um, uh, you know, discredit everything that was done. There's not a single major publisher who's done anything positive in here. And I simply use this. If you trust Microsoft, then trust Elsevier. If you trust Facebook, trust uh, Mendeley. It's as simple as that. I don't think any major sector can be trusted uh, uh, implicitly without serious checks on it. And there are no checks. Uh, there's no governments on uh, scientific publishing. So, some of the things they're doing, we get masses of FUD and disinformation. Uh, the publishers may say that they're helping you, but actually I spent five years uh, debating with Elsevier. It's wasted five years of my life and got nowhere other than FUD. There are monopolies on the infrastructure. I think this is very dangerous that you will end up with something similar to Apple's um, universal infrastructure uh, if um, Macmillan and um, the APIs from the publishers are allowed to happen. Uh, and all libraries are persuaded in uh, signing restrictive contracts. If the university libraries, and here I would commend Liru and Liba and other organisations, if they can make their uh, members say, no, we are not going to sign these restrictive uh, clauses in the contracts because they don't have to, um, uh, then we would be a long way forward. Here's a typical example. Wiley, to be helpful to researchers, has introduced a capture. So every 25 um, uh, papers, you have to type in a capture. Um, and, uh, if, uh, and they have a limit of uh, 100 papers a day. Imagine we were going through, uh, you know, 100,000 papers for um, clinical trials, as you've seen. 
that's three years to go through Wiley because you would only be allowed to mine a hundred a day. That's the issue. And of course they say, well, we'd be terribly helpful and give you exceptions. But everybody who has dealt with publishers knows that it takes years for them to respond to individuals asking uh, for things. And there are hundreds of publishers. So my last slide, um, we see libraries as... Uh, one of the major solutions here, but libraries have got to stand up and fight for our rights. So we're working in Cambridge, we've got some uh, very forward-looking libraries there. Um, we're working with Cochrane um, next week on systematic trials. We're very grateful to LIBA, which has done a wonderful job in pushing this forward, and we are part of their uh, future TDM programme um, and uh, H2020 programme, and that's wonderful. And Content Mine uh, provides workshop and training in this area, so if any of you are interested in having internal or public training, we'd be delighted to do it. And thank you very much for the um, invitation.